Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and married one of his daughters. He brought her to live in the city of David until he could finish building his palace and the temple of the Lord and the wall around the city. At that time, the people of Israel sacrificed their offerings at local altars for a temple honoring the name of the Lord that had not yet been built. Solomon loved the people and followed all the instructions of his father David, except that Solomon too offered sacrifices and burnt incense at the local altars. The most important of these altars was at Gibeon. So the king went there and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings. That night, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and God said, what do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Solomon replied, You were wonderfully kind to my father, David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued this great kindness to him today by giving him a son to succeed him. O oh Lord, my God, now you have made me king instead of my father, David. But I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am among your chosen people, a nation so great, they are too numerous to count. Give me an understanding mind so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great nation of yours. The Lord was pleased with Solomon's reply and was glad that he had asked for wisdom. So God replied, Because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people and have not asked for a long life of riches for yourself or the death of your enemies, I will give you what you ask for. I will give you a wise and understanding mind, such as no one else has ever had or ever will. And I will also give you what you did not ask for, riches and honor. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And if you follow me and obey my commands as your father David did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon woke up and realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, where he sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. Then he invited all his officials to a great banquet. Sometime later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my lord, one of them begged. This woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three days later, she also had a baby. We were alone. There were only two of us in the house. But her baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the night and took my son from beside me while I was sleeping. She laid her dead child in my arms and took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning, when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted, It certainly was your son, and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, The dead one is yours, and the living one is mine. And so they argued back and forth before the king. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours. And each says that the dead child belongs to the other. All right, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, cut the living child in two and give half to each of these women. Then. The woman who really was the mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out, Oh no, my lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, All right, he will be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. Then the king said, 
Do not kill him, but give the baby to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. Word of the king's decision spread quickly throughout all Israel, and the people were awed as they realized the great wisdom God had given him to render decisions with justice. So Solomon was king over all Israel, and these were his high officials. Azara, son of Zadok, was the priest. Eli, Horeth, and Aha, the sons of Sisha, were court secretaries. Jesaphat, son of Elud, was the royal historian. Benani, son of Jehoiada was commander of the army. Zadok and Abathar were the priest. Azar, son of Nathan, presided over the district governors. Zabud, son of Nathan, a priest, was a trusted advisor to the king. Ashar was manager of palace affairs. Adonram, Adonaram, son of Abda, was in charge of the labor forces. Solomon also had 12 district governors who were all over Israel. They were responsible for providing food from the people for the king's household. Each of them arranged provisions for one month of the year. These are the names of the 12 governors. Ben-Hur in the hill county of Ephraim, Ben-Decker in Machaz, Shalbim, Bethshema, and Elon Bethana, been heased in Arab, both including Succoth in all the land of Hepfer, Ben Abinadab, Ben and Abadab in Naphador, in Naphador. He was married to Taphath, one of Solomon's daughters. Banna, son of Elud, and Tanik, and Gidido, all of Bethshan near Zareth, below Jezreel, and all the territory from Bethshan to Abel Mithlaw, and over to Jokmin, Ben Geber in Rothgalid, including the towns of Jar named for Jar's son of Manesseth, in Galid and in the Argob region of Bashan, including 60 great fortified cities with gates barred with bronze. Ahandab, son of Ido in Mahame, Amaz in Nephetali, he was married to Basemath, another of Solomon's daughters, Banna, son of Hushe, in Asher and in Aloth. Jesaphat, son of Para, in Ishakar. Simi, son of Elah, in Benjamin. Geber, son of Uri, in the land of Galid, including the territories of King Sion of the Amorites and King Og of Bashan. And there was one governor over the land of Judah. The people of Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They were very contented with plenty to eat and drink. King Solomon ruled all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines, as far south as the border of Egypt. The conquered peoples of those lands sent tribute money to Solomon and continued to serve him throughout his lifetime. The daily food requirements for Solomon's palace were 150 bushels of choice flour and 300 bushels of meal, 10 oxen from the fattening pens, 20 pasture-fed cattle, 100 sheep or goats, as well as deer, gazelles, roebucks, and choice fowl. Solomon's dominion extended over all the kingdoms west of the Euphrates River, from Tishash to Gazaz, to Gaza, excuse me. And there was peace throughout the entire land, throughout the lifetime of Solomon. 
All of Judah and Israel lived in peace and safety. And from Dan to Beersheba, each family had its own home and garden. Solomon had 4,000 stalls for his chariot horses and 12,000 horses. The district governors faithfully provided food for King Solomon and his court, each during his assigned month. They also brought the necessary barley and straw for the royal horses in the stables. God gave Solomon great wisdom and understanding and knowledge too vast to be measured. In fact, his wisdom exceeded that of all the wise men of the East and the wise men of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone else, including Ethan and Ezra, Ezraite, and Heman, Calcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. His fame spread throughout all the surrounding nations. He composed some 3,000 proverbs and wrote 1,005 songs. He could speak with authority about all kinds of plants, from the great cedar of Laban to the tiny hyssop that grows from cracks in a wall. He could also speak about animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, and kings from every nation sent their ambassadors to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. King Hiram of Tyre had always been a loyal friend of David. So when he learned that David's son Solomon was the new king of Israel, Hiram sent ambassadors to congratulate him. Then Solomon sent this message back to Hiram. You know that my father David was not able to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord his God because of the many wars he waged with surrounding nations. He could not build until the Lord gave him victory over all his enemies. But now the Lord my God has given me peace on every side, and I have no enemies at all as well. So I am planning to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord my God, just as he instructed my father that I should do. For the Lord told him, Your son, whom I will place on your throne, will build the temple to honor my name. Now please command that cedars from Laban, Laban be cut for me. Let my men work alongside yours, and I will pay your men whatever wages you ask. As you know, there is no one among us who can cut timber like you Sidonians. When Hiram received Solomon's message, he was very pleased and said, Praise the Lord for giving David a wise son to be king of a great nation of Israel. Then he sent this reply to Solomon. I have received your message, and I will do as you have asked concerning the timber. I can supply you with both cedar and cypress. My servants will bring the logs from the Laban, Laban Mountains, the Lebanon. Why? Sorry, guys, it's Lebanon. I have received your... Um, my servants will bring the logs from the Lebanon mountains to the Mediterranean Sea and build them in rafts, build them into rafts. We will float them along the coast to whatever places you choose. Then we will break the rafts apart and deliver the timber to you. You can pay me with food for my household. So Hiram produced for Solomon as much cedar and cypress timber as he desired. In return, Solomon sent him an annual payment of 100,000 bushels of wheat for his household and 110,000 gallons of olive oil. So the Lord gave great wisdom to Solomon just as he had promised. And Hiram and Solomon made a formal alliance of peace. Then King Solomon enlisted 30,000 laborers from all Israel. He sent them to Lebanon in shifts. 10,000 every month so that each man would be one month in Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram was in charge of this labor force. Solomon also enlisted 70,000 common laborers, 80,000 stonecutters in the Hill County, and 3,600 foremen to supervise the work. 
At the king's command, the stonecutters quarried and shaped costly blocks of stone for the foundation of the temple. Men from the city of Gebel helped Solomon's and Hiram's builders prepare the timber and stone for the temple. And that's the end of five. I hope y'all are blessed. In Jesus' name, amen.